Hi. <sighs> Let's talk about Ableton templates. They're a very interesting thing. A template can be very, very useful for you. Especially if you're working on a set themed thing for quite a while. For every quarter I tend to make a new one so that every new project I do, long lasting project, I normally spend around three months on a project, I can have a new template for each one and then I can make sure that the types of sound I'm using for that project are readily and easily available to me all the time. What I find especially useful about them is, well as I said, the fact that you can always have those sounds that you're using readily at your fingers. We're going over my personal template, the one I've been using over the last few months to do all the all this album that I've been doing, the Strings of the Information Age. And that's been very interesting to do. Well, I will be showing you how to create your own one today. And on top of that, I will be going through the one I've been using for Strings of the Information Age and showing you all the different plugins in there. And you can actually, if you want to, you can get my Ableton template by pre-ordering my new album, Strings of the Information Age, or if you're watching after May the 30th, you can just buy the album on Bandcamp, and if you get it on Bandcamp, it comes with a download of my Ableton template. Though you must note, you do have to own all the plugins I do in it, and there are quite a few. And yes, so do take good notice of that. Though I will be going through everything, so you should be able to see everything that I have in it. What is important is the how efficient templates can be. As I've said, if you're working on a set project for a set amount of time, just having one there is super useful. Now, on top of that, what you can do is there is a bit of an issue with using a template if you use it all year round, that's your template. And that is you can fall into the trap of only using the sounds that are in your template, which can start to make your music feel a bit repetitive. As I was saying, there is a bit of a trap you can fall into if you use same template all year round and that's why every quarter I tend to go through and take a look at my project, remove the sounds I haven't used that quarter, add new ones which I've just bought or have bought a few months ago but haven't added to the template yet, things like that. And over the year I build up that year's template and then the next year I often go back and I strip out loads of things and then I slowly add bits and pieces throughout the year in conjunction with what I am making at the time. So at the minute my template is very orchestral themed whilst at the end of last qu quarter uh, in 2020 it had a lot more synths and samples in there because I was doing a lot of techno. But I'm getting back into doing more orchestral things and doing more scoring and composing for other stuff. Currently doing interesting open source game. That's something I'll have to speak about another time. That's very early stages but that's very interesting. So I'm currently going through my template adding some things, removing some things in conjunction with what I'm doing in the video game. Got to make sure the music I'm writing is quite romantic here, so I'm kind of stripping out all my simps at the minute, but I will be showing you my saved default template when I get back home, and we'll have a look through that and I'll explain that to you in a bit more detail. For now, I'm going to finish this lovely walk and then get home. Right, I'm now back home, so let's go and have a look at my Ableton template. Hi, right, so here we are inside Ableton. Let's take a look at the project here. This is my default Ableton template. We'll start from the top and work my and I'll work my way down. So right at the top here we've got my kick slash kick bass, but it's also just synth bass kind of group here. So we go here, we've got a it's quite in detail, if we go into the session view here, we can look at it a bit better. We've got the group channel, we've got the second group channel, and that inside it has got the kick, which I'll put a sample in and just hit play here. Then I've got another 
room, which is the kick bass, and then here I'll do all the kind of techno deep rumble kick stuff. And then we've got synth bass here, which is just got an empty MIDI track. And I'll put Diva or Massive or anything like that on there. And then that's the kick bass. So rather simple at the top. There is just a J37 tape on there on the group channel. And on the individual kick track, there's a saturator and overdrive. And yeah, that's it. I am actually thinking in the next iteration of my template, I'm thinking about removing that first group, the kick group, because I'm not using it as much as I was last year. Though I might still keep it, I might just make it a little bit shorter than what it is currently. So now we've got next group, it's the percussion group. And if we look here, we've got just another studio tape. I have this on all the groups because I like having that on when I'm mixing. If we go here, I've got a snap, and not snapper, a snare and clap channel here. That's just got a little bit of EQ. This is the EQ I tend to f find I have to apply to snares and claps. And they've just got a little bit of a pass on there. Then our second group inside the percussion group here is our hats group. That's got another EQ. And this plugin here, which I turn on in the mixing process, this is I Heart New York by Baby Audio. And it's a parallel compressor, and it sounds really nice. I really like using that to just add a little bit of brightness to my um, percussion hi-hats and stuff like that. Really nice. And then I've got all my other percussion here. So I've got timpani. And that's just um, BBC, something that's Symphonic Orchestra discovered here. Timpani hits. I do need to remember to turn the reverb down on that. But there's still quite a bit of room on there. But then that tends to see a spit for our libraries, and I do quite like that. But if you play a lot, you get something called sample build up, I believe. I can't remember the exact term, but you start getting that reverb really in there, even though it should be. Here I've got the same thing, just the untuned selected. So that's quite nice to use in compositions. I've also got a fair um, light edition here. So that's a contact player instrument there. It's really good and I think you can get for free. I'm not too sure though, but I think it is. Uh, here I've got Labs Percussion. And I've got Labs Drum Kit. And I don't have any processing on there other than a pro key, but that's got nothing on it. That's just completely flat. But then when I am doing a mixing, I'll obviously do have a processing on there. Then I've got the synth channel here, which has got another pro key with nothing on it. And first synth track is Diva. <laughs> Absolute favourite of mine, this is I love Diva. Beautiful synth. Really do like using it. And I've got quite a few different presets for this as well. It's something I really just love to load up and just sometimes just play and have a listen. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful sounding synth. This is one that I really uh, Cosmic Bliss. This is the one I really, really love here.
absolutely beautiful. Love Diva. Next synth here is Analog Lab V5. Though I sometimes switch this with V4 because V5 doesn't have all the pr all the stuff in it that V4 does, but it has more of some other stuff. It's a bit weird. But the default patch I have loaded up here is Bad Pad 2. Love this. You can hear it on a bunch of my tracks. I really do love it. Beautiful sounding synth. Then I've got Massive loaded up here, which is using my Dub Techno chord preset, which if I send to my delay channel, which we'll have a look at in a minute. Instantly get some lovely dub stuff going on with that. So I'd love to have that loaded in there. And then we've got my string group here, which has got a J37 and a Pro Key with nothing on it. And the J37, I always leave that off until I start mixing. So if we undock this, I've got a bunch here. Let's start right from the top. So I've got Originals Intimate Strings loaded up here, which are some of the samples from Albion to Ligero. I think that's how you pronounce it. But it's packaged in a smaller thing. And that sounds like this. And this is a bunch of different different articulations here. But in my default template, I only have Long Chamber and Flautendo. Flautendo I absolutely love. And so I often load that up and just sit and sketch an idea with it. You can hear it a lot in my sketch series I did a few weeks ago. Also sounds really nice down low. Though I don't really tend to use it down low unless I'm just got a root note in the bottom. beautiful and yes so these two are ensemble patches and I tend to use these to sketch out an idea and then I'll do all the voicing later on so I'll record and sign and then I'll go and split it uh, split out until it's all there so cello violo etc etc and talking about that let's move on to violins here so BZSO Violins one long. Again, beautiful sounding. Love to use it. This is a great library. Do love to use it. I plan on upgrading to Core at some point soon, but I do love using that. On the next channel we've got just the spiccato articulation of the violins. Beautiful. And then violins too.
But then, second violin, second track of it, I've got pits loaded up instead of spiccato. Again, sounds lovely. Then I've got violas, only have longs set up in the template. And then celli, because it's a group of cellos. Can't remember the exact amount, but it's quite a few. Also sounds beautiful up high. Lovely. Then double bass. Let's move on to horns here. So horns, I've just got it. And I know this isn't an orchestral order in the order you meant to have it, but I do plan, if my template, and I start doing even more orchestral stuff, I might lay it out that way. So we've got French horns, short French horns, trumpets, tenor trombones, bass and drum too, but let's take a listen to this. Really nice sounding there. This is the short French horn. Trumpets. Now, a good thing to remember is the that what is it? It's the how many is it? It's trumpets, ten trombones, bass. No, so trumpet tenor and horns and bass sorry yeah they're all multiple so there's the French horn there's four playing at the same time so when you play a single chord you haven't got three French horns playing you've got three times four which equals twelve so you've got twelve horns playing when you do a chord that's just a simple try that's called the pipe horn not the pipe horn the pipe organ effect and so you tend to do is only do single notes with the brass section and split it out between them all. The trumpets we've got here, they're A3. So I've been play, so I've played a chord there. Three times three, nine. Horns, twelve. If you're going for that type of sound, it can sound well, but if you're not, best be careful. Tenor trombone. So, yeah, tenor trombone. Based on bone. I really do like it down there when you get down to that octave. Lowest octave you can go. Especially if you crank the dynamic. 
especially on the shorts, it sounds beautiful. It's really got that nice and crispy sound to it. Then yeah, a tuba. I used to play the tuba. So the tuba does have a special place in my heart, so I do love to use that in my pieces. Then we've got pianos here. So first one, firewood piano in standard upright mode. Beautiful sounding. Lab soft piano. Then I've got native instruments, the gentleman here. Really nice upright. And then we've got effects down here. So these two here, just audio channels, which I'll put some audio on. Here, another one. So I'll just put a simpler sample on there, drop a sample in, spread it out through the thing. So this is the kind of stuff for like rain, etc, etc. Here we've got Heinbach's, uh, what's it called? Yeah, Landfill Totems, love this thing. Really interesting, and I've started using this a lot since I got it. Because it's all scientific test equipment. It's really interesting. I often load up some contact instruments in here as well. But they're not in my template. So now let's take a look at the return channels here. On my first one, I've got Valhalla Vintage Rub, and that's on Concert Hall 1980s, four seconds. So if I get up a piano here, let's go for Firewood, I'll just add some reverb to that. It sounds lovely. My second reverb is a Realm here by Native Instruments. Again, lovely reverb. That's 100% mix, 3.2 seconds, so they're on the area mode. So if I just sign that there to the firewood. I don't tend to use that reverb as much, but I do often use it for very long pieces. Here I've got that dub delay I was saying about, so if we go back to Massive here. And put it on the delay. So that's a Replica XT delay going on. Of course, it dotted eight notes on the analog mode. Sounds beautiful, I think. Then we have the bass reverb, which I use if I'm using a synth bass. Probably go remove this if I end up removing that synth bass group channel there. I don't use this too much. I occasionally use it on um, cellos and basses as well, because they're also quite low, and you don't want to have too much reverb on a low instrument. Then I've got waves, chamber strings here. And there is one with mist, not chamber swing, sorry, chamber reverb. Yeah, that's what it's called. Also, I missed this rev plate 140 here, which is a reverb, and I tend to use that for orchestral stuff and or, uh, what's it called? Just normal drums is what I tend to use it for. But on the piano, it sounds like this.
it's an interesting one. Then on my master, I just have a span and this plug in here, which acts as a headphone thing. Uh, it corrects my headphones so it's got a flat as curve as possible. Got that turned off in a minute. And obviously when you open that up, it's set to my default headphones, so you've got to make sure you change that. Otherwise it will sound weird, that's TB Morphit. And so that is my Ableton template. You can download that if you pre-order my new album, Strings of the Infamage, on Bandcamp. And if you're watching this after May the 30th when it comes out, you can also just buy it there. My name's been George Hammond. Thank you for watching. This has been really interesting and fun to do. It's been nice to go through my template. So thanks to anyone who's watched this. Strings of the Information Age comes out May the 30th. I've been George Hammond. Goodbye.